All right, today you will join me uh, where I try to remove the dual boot I have on my Pentium 4. I want to remove Linux and only keep Windows XP and I decided, you know what, how hard can it be? I've removed Linux partitions before but never on a XP system, always a newer Windows. So always Windows 7 and up, but never XP. So I decided I'd record my experience here because it, it wasn't all smooth sailing. So yeah, I'll talk you through the process and uh, hopefully some of you can maybe learn from my mistakes I made because I made some mistakes, but in the end I got it figured out. So yeah, as you see here, I have the grub bootloader and also here the Windows XP entry and we boot into it right now. Also I uh, gotta add that on any in any case doesn't matter XP 7, Vista 8, 10 you always need some sort of uh, recovery USB may it be here as I have a Windows XP disk can also be a Windows 7 USB stick, it can also be a Windows PE, but just something which gives you a command line where you can restore the master boot record. And that mostly helped. I would always run a command called bootrec.exe slash fix MBR, fix master boot record. That's what I would do on all the systems. But I found this one tutorial um, which told me otherwise. Since I was on XP I didn't have the same command line and I was like yep must be a different procedure right? And they talked about boot CFG and as you will see then when we get to there huh, it didn't quite work out the first try or the second or the third but anyway first we have to remove the partition of course as always. And for that, of course, we go into the good old disk management, which looks still the same on Windows 10, almost. So I just run here disk mgmt.msc, and that will bring us to the disk management. Now my computer only has one disk, so it's not all too complicated in this case. And you can see immediately the blue uh, partition is the Linux, which Windows can't read and the black one is the C drive for XP. And so what I will do now is I will go ahead and delete the Linux partition, which is pretty straightforward. Now caution, again, before I do that, make sure you have a bootable medium so you can fix it later on because the bootloader will be screwed up and you can't boot your Windows anymore once you do this. So. Just a word of warning, before you delete the partition, as I do, like like this now, um, make sure you have a rescue boot stick. So here I tried first to delete the partition completely, so I have unallocated space. I expected that I could now expand, extend the Windows partition, make it one big partition. But don't ask me why, I just... Uh, didn't get that option here, so maybe XP couldn't do that or something. Uh, I don't know. So uh, I created an extended partition for whatever reason, or at least I thought so first, um, that that's the better idea. And what it would do now is it uh, wouldn't do much. <laughs> so yeah, I just check here and find out that there's nothing happening so only free space and still no extend no no uh, ability to extend nothing so once again i go in here and i can not only create a logical drive which i'm like yeah pff, whatever go ahead right and so yeah here i did the mistake and didn't check perform a quick format <laughs> and now the formatting started and oh my god this took very long because i didn't check quick format eh. So we'll be back once this is done finally. And woohoo, after a very long time I have my data partition formatted and I finally have another partition and Linux is gone. And I have space on my hard drive. So I create here a folder just to test it out and everything works, great. 
now comes the interesting part because when I shut it down now again now last time that Windows booted before we fix it and uh, you will see immediately what happens when you delete just the Linux partition and, de and you don't do anything now so here the computer reboots and oh 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 there you go error no such partition yeah because we deleted everything obviously there is no partition so yeah now we need to grab our fancy XP disk and put it in there and boot it up and once it has booted up we will press the R key which means recovery so we don't install nothing we just booted and then after it booted up into the installer we will press R so yeah let me boot into the windows and uh, then we'll get the party started right here is the Windows XP installer yeah it's in German I know I know I know uh, I primarily chose the German one because of the keyboard because we have a different keyboard layout and I didn't want to have a different layout in the command line there's uh, really uh, that's really annoying so yeah I pressed the R key and as you can see here's the Windows XP recovery console and uh, yeah so here it's asking me to which Windows installation you want to sign in and I'm doing this the first time by the way guys so I'm trying to figure it out um, the first time so yeah only press one you idiot so I finally pressed one array and so I can now access the Windows partition so when I press enter it's gonna say put in administrator uh, password and I don't have a password set so just press enter and here is our shell array yes and now I run this command that I read on this tutorial website and uh, that just made everything worse I wrote bootcfg.rebuild slash rebuild and so yeah I was just uh, like yep now it's gonna do it now it's gonna fix the master boot record and everything will be fine right well wrong I just uh, as always didn't read through correctly and so you will see what happens once uh, this finishes and here is where my fails all started I shouldn't have added another installation to the bootloader nothing would have like been necessary to add but yeah I was just like yep all right let's edit then because that's my install right so I was like yep all right let's edit and now it says uh, the name like uh, it's really badly translated Lade Kenong means like can something completely different but hey and I was like hey shit what, what now no Lade Kenong nothing I just wrote exit because I thought I could exit this way <laughs> and so I now successfully called my operating system exit <laughs> and here with the loading options I also wrote exit so yeah th obviously that didn't work since I just all I basically did now and now I know at least I just added an entry to the Windows bootloader which was called exit and yeah that's it nothing working and I was like huh why well figured it out later then haha <laughs> and my failure continues my inability to read guys correctly continues I would boot up again run the command again the rebuild command and add yet again the Windows installation to my bootloader hooray second time wrong but this time I was like hey I need to call it something so I called it XP digger yeah the German guys will understand and I wrote fast slash fast detect that's something that's supposed to be uh, working I guess when you boot XP with a bootloader or whatever and yeah surprise surprise didn't work either because I just did the same stuff again just this time with a slash fast detect and a different name yeah so uh, still no success now granted the guide wasn't perfect and so I was like hey let's look into something different and I entered this command boot cfg slash default and here you see all my fuck ups I even created another XP digger 
and uh, yeah here you see all my loading options for my system but I still haven't fixed the goddamn master boot record yes that's I basically just didn't do anything for my, against my problem all I did I just created some startup entries and so I would run this rebuild command again and I was like ah what do I maybe need to set the number four I was a little confused there I ran the commands back and forth and and I was like hey maybe I need to uh, uh, set number four as my entry because that was the original created uh, XP installation uh, so yeah of course didn't work because I still haven't fixed the goddamn master boot record but uh, well don't worry we'll get to it finally now and so after another reboot I'm yet again at the command line of XP and uh, the camera doesn't want to focus and I will finally type the command that I should have typed from the start fix MBR and here it says caution you want to fix the Masbrook record are you insane you really sure what you're doing here and yeah I was a little scared because the Windows 7 and up would never show something like that and I was like yeah let's do it and so as you can see new master button boot record was successfully written or it was fixed or however it's said in English and I was like hey let's write let's write this boot cfg dot uh, default again because now huh nothing changed what uh, I was I was slightly confused because I thought this is gonna clean up but no all it did is actually fix the install and now I will be able to see my absolutely messed up full of boot entries uh, bootloader which uh, is by the way the boot.ini file which we will edit later and completely make it go away so as you can see here is my <laughs> my bootloader with the four options and three of them basically useless so I would choose the last one Windows XP professional which is, yeah is the one we want and here you go XP booting again at this point I was really happy that I finally found out the problem but I wanted to make it perfect I don't want to have this stupid messed up bootloader that I created here and so what we will do is we will now go on the hunt for the boot.ini file and I couldn't find it from the guides that, uh, that told me where it, where it was it's not in the C Windows directory uh, it's I, I didn't find it anywhere but I found it um, going to the properties of the computer and startup and yeah you, you will see it immediately again I couldn't find that boot.ini file in the system directory or startup folder or nothing but I found it under startup and recovery as you can see and here are already my boot options and uh, there is our boot.ini file and as you can see it is a mess we got all this stuff which we don't need my stupid boot flag which I created with exit and all I did is just went ahead and deleted them and I hope that that fixed it so I saved the file and uh, yeah just triple checked here that it's really saved and it was and now let's see what I did I can't really remember oh yeah now I will reboot the system and hope that everything went well I wasn't too afraid of breaking it or anything at this point since I could just always go back into the Windows recovery and run this boot boot CFG or whatever again to find out what I did so it's rebooting and of course I know I need a new CMOS battery so as you can see it's always showing me this error but when I bypass it you will see XP loading from itself, no waiting around, no boot options which uh, are a mess, nothing. So that was the end of my adventure with the boot.ini file and removing the dual boot from Windows XP. So in conclusion I can say guys, uh, delete it the way I did it, but leave all this boot.c boot cfg slash rebuild or default alone just run fix mbr and that's all you have to do then it will revert it to stock and if you didn't mess with the boot.ini earlier then you can just lay back and watch xp booting by itself however if you have messed around with the boot.ini if 
to look into that basically. So here is XP. Yeah. Hooray. Uh, working. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope I could help you out a bit with my mistakes. Uh, it's not maybe not the most interesting video, but hey, nevertheless, I got it figure, figured out and I didn't have to reinstall XP. So that's uh, what counts, right? Nothing's perfect, especially not my videos. So thanks for watching. See you later then.